jumping off the porch like mom's not home. Tell me why the best things feel so wrong. Summer nights, love them how they take so long. All right, what's up, guys? I actually forgot to shoot an intro for the video that I'm posting today when I was in Paris, but today's video is a college q and It was the second collaboration video I did with fellow Princeton YouTuber Nick Che. I'm really excited for you guys to see it. It's a great video. We answered all the questions you guys sent to us. And without any further ado, let's just, let's just get into the video. All right, so our first question is, what did you struggle the most when you first got to college? I think the hardest part, it eventually got better, but at first it is hard finding friends and people that you click with because the school is so big. While relatively it's not as big compared to our state schools, there are still gonna be thousands of other kids. So just finding people you have similar interests with and people that you click with, it's a little hard at first, but it gets better with time. Yeah, definitely one thing that I had to adjust to was a couple weeks in, as soon as classes start to pick up and you've kind of found your solid group of friends in your, in your residential college or your dorm or whatever, um, you find that there's such interesting people that you will participate in like hour long, two hour long conversations and then you'll come back to your room, it'll be like 12.30 at night and you realize that you haven't finished your math piece yet. And that's something that I really had trouble with is because in high school, you live at home, you do your work at home, yeah, you'll go out on the weekends and meet up with friends and stuff, but for the most part, it's like completely separate. Where at college, you live with your best friends and you have to get your work done there So too. it's definitely hard like finding a balance between how much time can I spend eating dinner or just having a conversation when in reality you probably have to get to your work. Next question is, do you think high school prepared you for college, specifically AP classes? In my opinion, it's hard to say because it, it varies depending on what high school you went to, the if it's private or public or anything like that, but I will say that going to the Ivy League is a completely new ballpark that I personally don't think that any high school will really prepare you for. Like, it will give you the fundamentals of learning how to manage your time or doing ha or having good study habits, but there's nothing that will really prepare you for the rigor that is the Ivy League. Yes, uh, high school and AP classes and like loading up on AP classes definitely teaches you how to work hard and you'll begin to develop study habits, but... You kind of have to come up with a new game plan when you get to college. Like, yeah. some of the things that worked in high school might not work in college because things are so different. Aside from the types of classes that you're taking, like lectures and professors and not having a teacher that you can always ask questions to, like that kind of gets difficult. And the classes, the classes are just really, really hard. Um, and you just, you have to, like for the first time for me in college, I in high school, if I didn't understand something in a class, that was that was rare because I would I would always work to make sure I understand something. I after every single physics class, first and second semester, I would walk out of there and what what, what, just what happened? happened? What happened? That was that was not English. Yeah, it's it's definitely an adjustment because the material is just getting so much harder and you have to you have to keep up with it. And the thing is like if you don't keep up with it, if you're not on top of your workload, don't have your schedule planned out correctly, then you start to get behind and it just gets a lot harder. Like trust us when we say that it's super, it's super important to manage your time very well and you know prioritize what's most important to you. Yes, obviously I recommend taking a ton of AP classes in high school. It will prepare you for college, but ultimately it's a whole new ball game. It's like a whole new said. ball park. Yeah. All right, our next question is a good one. Um, it is from M underscore Berg 29. He said, what do other students at Yale or Princeton think of you being a YouTuber? Being a YouTuber in college is, especially at the Ivy Leagues where vlogging and like pranks and videos like that, like that's not very common. That's at the bigger state schools. So for us being vloggers, it's definitely putting yourself out there. You definitely have to have a lot of self-confidence and really not care about what people think. Carrying around a camera with a tripod, looking kind of like an idiot, or trying to film in like a lecture or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> the first few months are definitely hard, um, but once you see the progress and the work paying off and making an audience and growing, like that's when you start to realize like this is all worth it. I'm not going back. And to be honest, like your friends at school, they'll ultimately support you. They think it's cool that you're going out of your comfort zone, doing things that no one else has done. And especially the fact that like we're kind of like the first wave of Ivy League YouTubers yeah. makes it, you know, really important for us to like set a good precedent for anyone else that wants to follow. Yeah, so that was definitely one thing that I did not account for in July when I started, you know, making YouTube videos is what my fellow students at Yale would think of them when I'm kind of putting myself out there and using the Yale name. Um, so it was definitely an interesting experience the first couple months uh, as people kind of gradually discovered that I was that guy or you know you go on YouTube and you search Yale or you go on YouTube and you search Princeton. We're the first ones that pop up. Well, yeah that's that's us and that's it's kind of it was kind of awkward a little strange a awkward. when you just get approached by random people at your school like hey like 
you're the you're the YouTube guy, but it's also it's also really cool, um, especially for me during our accepted students a week Bulldog days. That was one of the craziest experiences of my life when I actually had people come up to me and say, "Oh, like I watch your videos." But not only that, I had people come up to me and say, "Hey, like." I didn't even think of applying to Yale until I saw one of your videos and like now I'm here and it just it just really hit me about how much of an impact we actually have. Going off of that, it, it is pretty surreal at times when you're just walking down the streets, not, maybe not even on campus, and people will go up to you like, hey, I saw your video on YouTube, like, thank you so much, you inspired me to apply to this college or you, you helped me so much through the application process. Like, that's what means the most to us. Like, we don't care about views, we don't care about likes or sponsorship or anything like that. Like, we care about making an impact on you guys and like, showing you that we're just normal guys. We worked hard in high school and we got to where we are now, but we wanna just walk you guys through the process and, and show you our journey because that's the coolest thing for us. Yeah, definitely. I feel like, like Nick said, we're kind of the first wave. Like, not a lot of people have done YouTube videos from a student's perspective at these Ivy League schools and they're kind of this, mystic thing that you don't really know how to approach and you don't know what life is actually like there so that's that's kind of our job we're here to help you prepare yourselves for those schools and then give you a peek into what life is actually like there and for me i'm sure it's the same for you like when i the reason i started to make these videos was that i was researching like on youtube like vloggers at princeton or whatever and and, and for me personally like i'm sure it's the same for you but like when i was starting to make these videos it's because i was going on youtube like looking for campus tours or what life is like at our schools and I mean, Nick's the only YouTuber at Princeton. I'm the only YouTuber at Yale. And John's only YouTuber at Harvard. If you're watching this, John, hit us up. We'd love to do a collab. All right, guys, to interrupt the brief programming, we have a message from our sponsor, Crimson Education. As you guys know, we've both used them in the past, but they are a great resource. If you're trying to get into something like the Ivy Leagues, they'll help you with test prep, essay prep, um, and they just have a bunch of resources. Yeah, so if you've been watching either of our videos for a while, I guarantee you, you've been recommended at least one of Crimson's videos that we created to make sure that students get into their top schools. They'll help you with, whether it's essay topic brainstorming, SAT prep and tutoring, they are there for you. The best part is, is that it actually works and they've had over 460 offers to top 50 schools just since 2015. And they have over 25 offices across the globe so international students don't have to worry. If you're interested and want a customized affordable plan for your college needs, definitely check out the links down below and they're gonna be a great help for you. And back to your regular scheduled program. Um, this is from Christine Lee. Did you guys pick your colleges mainly for a certain major, a certain program, or the colleges themselves? Personally, right now I'm majoring in economics. I did not go into school thinking I was gonna be doing economics, but luckily any of the Ivy League schools have really great degrees in whatever program it is that you're gonna be applying to. So personally, I don't think I chose Princeton for its specific degree. If I was planning on going into photography or film, then obviously I would have chosen an art school like uh, NYU or USC or something like that. But I think like, like Josh said, having a liberal arts degree is very beneficial because you have such a wide variety of things that you're gonna have to learn. It's gonna well prepare you for when you get into the real world because you're not just gonna be really smart in engineering. You're gonna have a really diverse background in a lot of different subjects. Yeah, I mean, Yale has probably almost a hundred different majors that you can choose from. They're all absolutely phenomenal. I didn't choose Yale for whatever specific program I was gonna study. I chose Yale because it's Yale and the opportunities that are present there. I've rambled on about it for like way too long in some of my other videos, just about how great the opportunities are, how great the people are, how great the residential college life, how great the social life is. It's just absolutely amazing. This question is from Kai. Um, when you first arrived at Yale or Princeton, did you ever find yourself comparing yourself to your classmates? Uh, or did you feel the need to show off that you were smarter than them or uh, that you weren't stupid? You know, it's that's an interesting question. Um, so this is commonly known as the imposter syndrome. We talked about it in one of our previous video videos, but it's essentially where you feel like you don't fit in, like you don't deserve to get in. And my kind of philosophy on that is that you got into the school, so you deserve it, right? Like there should be no comparison between you or the person next to you on what your SAT or ACT score was. I literally, I think it took me about ha a semester in when I figured out what my best friend's a a ACT score was. Yeah. And that was literally just to like, we're talking and we're curious. Like no one's going around like, hey, what'd you get on your SAT? Yeah. Like no one cares. Like no one cares if you're a valedictorian or if you're a national merit finalist or whatever, right? Like everyone's there for a reason. And, and you shouldn't question whether or not you deserve that because you earned it and you should be enjoying it because spending more time on dwelling on comparing yourself, am I good enough? Am I not the smartest one or whatever? Like, you're, not, you're, you're losing time to enjoy the college experience. Yeah, definitely. I, I suffered a little bit from this my first semester. Uh, coming in as a CS major with only like a year and a half, two years of previous CS experience where I'm taking classes with kids that have been coding since kindergarten. It was definitely a little bit of a shock when 
this comes so much easier to other people. But then I thought about it, like I, I put the work in, I deserve to be at this school. I'm taking the same classes. I'm succeeding in the same classes as these other people. If anything, it's a compliment to my own like work ethic and ability to kind of adjust to a new environment. And I think the biggest thing is that regardless of whatever college you're at, whether it's an Ivy League or state school or whatever, people don't care about what you did in high school. Like sure, your accomplishments were amazing on your resume and they helped you get into that school, but don't go around flaunting it and bragging about it. Like, oh, I was valedictorian or whatever. Like everyone's a valedictorian. Everyone was student council president. Yeah, it's it's just something you accept and you you don't talk about. It. All right, um, someone asked tips on socializing and making friends in college, especially those not in your dorms and classes. We said this before, but I think it's super important to just get out of your comfort zone and go up to a stranger and have a conversation. Those first few weeks of school are super critical to just meeting a bunch of new people. Even if you don't remember their name, at least you made the effort to go and talk to them. And eventually, if you guys click, then that could turn into a friendship. Yeah. Uh, my biggest tips for socializing, especially I've, I've gotten a lot of questions of people that, oh, maybe they, they don't like their roommate or the, the people on their floor like aren't interested in what they're interested in and they're having a lot of trouble developing relationships with the people that they're living with. My biggest tip is to start study groups because everyone's at college to take classes and you'll get, you're guaranteed to find a lot of similar minded people that are interested in similar topics or majoring in the same thing as you in your freshman introductory classes. So find those people, get their numbers, text them, ask them questions about P sets and begin to develop study groups at office hours, peer tutoring, whatever it is. Another huge thing is that you have to be actively participating in social events and getting out of your dorm room on Friday nights. If you don't go out of your way to talk to people and make friends, like you can't complain when it comes to the second semester and you don't have a friend group or people to hang out with because like we said, the first few months are so crucial to your college experience. But at the same time, you still have four years at your school. So don't freak out if you don't feel like you have a friend group. Like I don't even feel like I have a solid friend group because things change. And as we get into our older years, you know, a lot of social opportunities open up for us. Yeah, going off of what Nick said, trying to get out of your dorm room on Friday or Saturday nights, like at least for me, I wasn't a party animal in high school. I almost felt guilty about sometimes going out to parties just because uh, like I, I had these big goals, these big aspirations. And some of these kids, all they wanted to do was party during high school, and it just—it just didn't feel like my vibe. It wasn't—it wasn't what I was going for. Um, but then you get to Yale, you get to Princeton, and you go out to these parties. Everyone there got into Yale or Princeton. You're at this party, you're—you're you're having fun, and all these people are—are are incredible. And how easy it is to just go up and talk to people, go up and socialize, and meet so many people. I was so surprised, like my first week at Yale, my first time like going out at my new school, just how many people I met and how open everyone is, especially at these big social events. You'll quickly realize that people are very open to conversations, especially that orientation week or when you're first beginning to meet people because chances are no one knows each other. So take advantage of that and utilize it to just meet as many people as you can. Yeah, definitely. All right, guys, that's about it for this Q&A. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a thumbs up down below. It helps me and supports the channel a lot more than you think. If you have any other questions for us, uh, drop them in the comment section below. We will try to answer them. I want to thank Nick for filming this video with me. Uh, definitely go over and check his channel right now because you, you actually only saw half the video. The other half is on his channel. Um, definitely subscribe. He is a great filmmaker, great YouTuber, and he can provide a lot of good content for you guys. If you're new and this is the first video you've seen so far, definitely subscribe because it's not stopping anytime soon. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.